Was ist da da? It's not all in German. <laughs> Was ist da da? Those artists and scholars and other strange assorted people who are drawn most keenly to it may generally feel that they can define data until they're required to do so. No more amorphous, geographically widespread, or willfully contradictory art movement has ever existed. And even classifying it as an art movement immediately raises sizable objections. A lot of twaddle, as well as much of subtle genius, has been written about Dada in the past 100 years, ever since it burst like a pustulant boil upon the visage of war ravaged Europe. My own definition of Dada would be an altered paraphrase of Lao Tzu, to wit. The Dada that can be told of is not the eternal Dada. <laughs> I think if you can talk about it, you're not really talking about it. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> How can contemporary artists respond meaningfully to Dada, living as we do in an age that feels to be at, as fantastic a remove from the time of the war to end all wars as can be? <laughs> As artists, or as anti-artists, how can we burst the festering boil on the seemingly sunny face of our own age? Certainly the bacillus of nihilism, so central to Dada, and indeed so central to many late 19th and early to mid-20th century avant-garde intellectual traditions, is weak today in America. The bacillus of the avant-garde itself is quite nearly extinct. Its core mission, which was kicking the bourgeoisie in the seat of the pants, has been co-opted by, guess who, the bourgeoisie. The aesthetic of shabby chic has been embraced. The idea of random is all the rage. These developments point towards what could seem like an inescapable conclusion, the only possible response today to the century-old anarcho-aesthetic mayhem of Dada is nostalgia. But as it happens, the influence of Dada is stronger and more complex than all that. Allow me to attempt to trace a lineage. Dada begat surrealism. Surrealism begat, or at least midwifed, abstract expressionism. Abstract expressionism, though currently much maligned and out of fashion, is the basis, either directly or not, for most abstract art that continues to be created. The element of chance or randomness undergirds or is a silent partner in much contemporary art, and we have Dada largely to thank for that. On another level, Dada would seem to have a staggering relevance today, as the war to end all wars has morphed in our age into the endless war on terror. <laughs> Many of the great literary fears first conjured in the teens and 20s, the urban paranoia of Kafka, the science fiction dystopia of Brave New World, or hitherto unpredictable cognates of those, have basically come to pass. We are spied on by our government, corporately created social media has anesthetized the citizenry, the educational system, free and intelligent journalism, and other causative attributes of what might once have been quaintly styled liberal democracy, or in an irreversibly steep decline. I'm not trying to depress you. <laughs> Our global ecosystem has been compromised on multiple fronts by perverse players in a failed game of late stage oligarchic capitalism. Where today are the clarion calls to the barricades that Dada was once only one obscure voice in sounding? In a world in a world of Facebook, 401ks, and Starbucks, to quote Phil Oakes, demonstrations are a drag and besides we're much too high. <laughs> All of which points inexorably to Dada as a societal prescriptive, as an antidote to complacency, as a cultural cooties shot. We may need Dada, Dada today more than ever. You're here! Woo! Yes, thank, you. thank you. Okay. <laughs> Polyophilin. Her job to hang chickens from the clothesline after her mother wrung their necks. Mm -hmm. The girl hiding under a clean waft of blue cotton sheets, counting how many twists it took the body before the head released. I don't know if they used clothespins, maybe the wooden ones that look like little people if you pencil in the eyes. Maybe they tied the chickens up with wire. Nowadays it's easier. One slice through shrink wrap takes you straight to the meat. No need to deal with heads or bones. Rolls and rolls of chicken wire top the chain link fence. Through our TV I see rows and rows of orange jumpsuits on the other side. 
cameras can't come close enough to show the eyes. Spokespeople say we'll get out of there after we clean and cover all we carried in. We'll shrink wrap even tanks and F-16s. And this from the U.S. Department of Defense news about the war on terrorism. In Kuwait, U.S. troops are washing their equipment, vehicles, and just a few of the division's 200 plus aircraft that will be shrink wrapped and sent back to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Some of the best data poems just can't be read enough. This one's by an author other than myself. As we know, there are known unknowns. There are things we know, we know, we also know. There are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The writer, Donald Rumsfeld. <laughs> right. 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 Emission. Ice caps melting, Russia staking out <clears throat> underworld lands, professors testing wells for carbon dioxide storage. Texas alone could hold 40 years emissions. <clears throat> TV for toddlers. Don't feel so guilty. If you're not Elaine McCright, click here, 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 click. In the Maldives, Knolls, Micro Atolls, rising waters, President Guyum erects concrete tetrapods, plans to buy a new homeland. In Bulgaria, Petra Nesterova's best girls desert her escort agency to divert snowless alpine skiers. And worldwide, Donald Trump stars in his own show. No longer sure on whom the sock should slip, time to let the cat out of the rat. Why do I prevaricate inside my iPod? Actually, I'm a bipod. Mm -hmm. Like you, almost I can see where the cord reaches to. A couple of days ago, I wondered if I needed a more Dada poem. The more I thought about it, the more I questioned my understanding of Dada. But then that seemed pretty Dada. <laughs> Intact poems found in public places on April 12, 2016, in the order in which they presented themselves. Please shut the door gently, or the wind will slam it shut. Merci. Let us see if the pomegranate is in bloom. The heart of the heart movement. On the Nimitz freeway, on the side of a semi that was moving quickly into our lane, this in large block letters. Delivering your future. <laughs> Do not park here, or you will receive a ticket from Peace Bank Yoga. <laughs> Open to the public closing sale. <laughs> Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministries. Water renovation. Stay out of the no zone. <laughs> Hand painted on the side windows of a hot pink Humvee stretch limo. Happy 16th birthday, Elise. Love, Mom. At a shopping mall entrance on a 21st century totem, Best Buy. Verizon, In and Out, JCPenney's, Metro, 
Cinnabon. Minor crash, no injuries. Safely move vehicles from travel lanes. Strong winds may slam door shut. Paseo Padre Parkway. Next one mile bump. <laughs> yeah. The door and the key. Come in, door beckons. I need a key, I say. The key is here, there. It's everywhere. It's in you. I go to the door. It's open. It's a doorway. I don't need a key. I just need, I just need my intention and my action. I step through. Everything is different. The edges are not crisp. The colors are all different. They're shifted. It's not blurry. They're just not crisp. Color is everywhere. The hues are so different. I want to stay. I need to stay. I want to absorb this in every fiber of my being until the colors and the edges are no longer different. Thank you. Okay. I'm Terry and I'm from Fargo, North Dakota. No longer from Fargo, North Dakota. <laughs> I got a couple here. This one's called Sleep. Sleep, where are you? My yawns and silent sighs call you out while hours and hours slip by. Please, any minutes will do. <coughs> Sleep, the sheep are loose. No moon to jump. The bedding's crumpled. My partner, long, long gone. Alone once more. Uh, Sleep, protect me, inject me, the squid's black ink, and slip away, taken down to the darkest dark, among the bottom crawlers, never to be seen till when. Sleep, just as the night puts the day to bed, here, night seldom comes, you tease, showing yourself in the slumber of the babe I smell. Sleep, are you not the gentlest? Or are you the shady agent who starves? I know not which. <laughs> Dirt and time. These headstones, more five times than any age, and not yet tired. Tilted by time, they reach out to be held once more. Conversations linger, husband and wife, dimly lit like dust in the air, slowly settling, warmed by pork and tea, before the day's last sweet nothings. I love you, good night dear, sweet dreams, see you in the morning, lover's legs never found. Over there, and just stones throw away, a parent strange towards child, enfolded in warm yet tattered linens of many nights, Whispering and trading, trading lines of a well-told and sleepy story, now completed through dirt and time. A passerby hears an echo's mourn, a thousand mourns, though not a relative among them. These are not my people. Mine are on the other side, up north, companions to the prairie, where the winds blow long and hot, and then forever cold and dark. Dog. Today, and very just now, I'm a dog. Now and long since, no known breed, almost feral. While the warden sleeps, my nose rises and frees itself into the air so soft, chasing a lurid scent, tethered only to hunger, tracing the last known bite.
panting in and out, loop de loops in figure 88s. Yes, yes, no, no, yes. Dangling pink, making trail panting. Over yonder through the dale, snout digging deep into the wild laughter of the smallest small and others yet to be leashed. It's a luscious life. Mm -hmm. Must I return to my master's rescue with torn paws and no recall? That's right. That a boy. That a boy. In the depth of air, on the edge of land and air, fluttering among nature's nature's sweetest things. In a slow, silent ceremony, fevered legs cool and become one. A hidden nest, most precious. In the cozy morning mist. Flannel memories linger, and harbor swans swim silently, faithfully, waiting for me. Do you know this lovely place, too? Okay, so Ars Poetica, uh, and I'm going to read it backwards. It's Archibald MacLeish. But B, a poem should not mean the leaning grasses and two lights above the sea for love, an empty doorway and a maple leaf for all the history of grief. Not true. A poem should be equal to as the moon climbs. A poem should be motionless in time. Memory by memory, the mind leaving as the moon behind the winter leaves. Twig by twig, the night entangled trees, leaving as the moon releases, as the moon climbs. A poem should be motionless in time, as the flight of birds. A poem should be wordless, of casement ledges where the moss has grown, silent as the sleeve-worn stone, and old medallions to the thumb, dumb as a globed fruit. A poem should be palpable and mute. Archibald MacLeish, Ars Poetica. <laughs> Uh, woodsman, <clears throat> close the book and shut the double dealing doors. If Neruda writes one more ode about support stockings, <laughs> I'm striking out for the darkest corner of the woods, far beyond the Art Nouveau licorice cottage. It's jelly bean bricks, it's welcome mat laced with the finest meringue. Look in the window and see wolves circling on the figurative carpet, trampling on mushrooms and beetles, snapping their gums at each other, playing Red Rover, Red Rover. Send that pair of human eyes right over. Outside, a witch flattens herself across the top of the trunk of a redwood. No support stockings on her, only a tattoo that says Lulu. She mumbles a curse her mother taught her when she was no more than nose high to a broomstick and the trunk changes into a piano, the witch into a diva. She's Lilith, slithering her way out of Eden, Cleopatra, dancing across the Nile, Joan of Arc, her, first, her face upturned, burning for love. <clears throat> there are tombs in these woods, labyrinthine, and stacks and stacks of travelers who ran out of breath. There are victims of everyday mayhem, suicidal succubi, Tiny changelings who never found their infant twins. A mendicant with a horn slumps against an inverted cross. His clothes odd, Armani suit, coonskin cap, converse high tops. He starts playing behind the beat. The melody slides inside itself. The witch nods her head once, twice, three times, and the song, like a huge stone, starts rolling across space. Okay, and here's what I just wrote. Um, 
Orgy at the Blue Moon you wrote Hotel. It? When? Today. Orgy at the Blue Moon Hotel. It's not finished. <clears throat> no one hears the owl. It hides in the wind which moves back and forth, up and down through the tunnel, like a memory. The voices are vague, hoarse, and guttural, like mine. They shout their names, the boats they shipped on, the Panacea, the Santa Maria. No one knew Frank Sinatra would welcome them to this world. No one knew Ella would swing them to their rooms. The paranoia is as thick as the butter they see in the windows. The Scottish guides kick their kilts above their heads. Spanish ladies dance on the ceiling, their colors screech and whine. Such flamboyance in the penthouse. Who could believe that the old man in the ranger's jersey with the loud demands played the piano like McCoy Tyner? Thunder rolls, you see the lightning in Oklahoma as the drummer shuffles his brushes like he's coaxing housewives to leave their homes. Take an old-fashioned walk with me, says the man in the hat. I sure do like your rum punch, buddy, and I'm going to bet you a thousand dollars this parade is never going to end. Okay, one more, since this is an art studio. <coughs> Rabelais. Rabelais was driving his Continental down the highway. It was one of those pink and blue Fast and Furious models with wings like some invention out of Da Vinci. The engine was pushing the wind hard and the smoke spilled out the back. Dale Earnhardt would have been proud. Centuries, one after another, came pouring out of the sky. A bevy of silk parachutes, a pointless masterpiece, dangling flora from heaven. Time was now space and space was time. Monks turned shopkeepers, nuns shed their habits. Balladeers discovered new melodies, new rhythms in the strings of their guitars. Science, after all, would help us sleep better. Her dress stained green with moss, the lady soared out of the lake, the thinnest of blades, as if Arthur had pulled her suddenly from stone. The air fluttered like an overheated engine. Insects breathed in and out, so delicious. She flashed her thumb and the car stopped. Robin Hood, Coyote, Sir Toby Belch. The back seat was full, noisy too, shotgun. Rabelais was out of gas, another war, another betrayal. He wanted the newspaper, said you never know who might want to kill you. Sluggo and Nancy, could be. The ladies in apartment 3G, most certainly. He asked his friend the giant to wipe the floor clean, but still the blood shook and still it circled until it rose up on his hind legs and demanded, more, give me more. <laughs>
Or is it because it is something that we so desperately cling to not having it in the singular sense? Mm -hmm. Rather, we must have many zeros, the more the better lined up in rows, perfect little circular kisses making us all cozy, loved, and secure. A substitute for nothing and everything combined. Damn it, when a zero is lost. This means something, as does the cloud of zeros defining our lives, putting us at risk for much more than the woe-filled voids of empty hearts and empty pockets. My little concerns are nothing, really, especially relative to the concerns of others, which are something and create the whole of human history, much of which has actually become lost or forgotten or transformed by the process, the oldest bits of which have been traced into something that is, ap haven't been traced into something that is absolutely true and therefore lacks something which is concretely real. It's something one can't quite put their finger on and therefore must be nothing because it hasn't been measured or confirmed by science or the media and therefore likely doesn't exist except in the residue of our own minds which is also nothing really and I know better than to make something out of nothing. <laughs>
part of that tree north of Highway 43, <laughs> which is Green Bay, Wisconsin. <clears throat> Deep undertones. I, I think there's a page break. Because <laughs> right. I wrote where he was going to perform next. Um, deep undertones, darkness tempts the unquestions, realm of the gestures rise, discourse towards changed visceral zones, uncovering lost expectations of the untruthful, pioneers of nothing, ancient, anxious for pleasantry, discourse. The goal of no goals suit the changed man, relinquishing, relinquishing control of control, <clears throat> recognizing territory unfamiliar and banal, stopping only to grasp or to gasp at rearview wonder and bow at the unsettled critique. Uh, the girl's version of Faust. In a raffish pair of pink wool socks, wisps of black silk, and round glasses with buffalo horn rims, M Miffy and friends play with Islamic fundamentalism. It's nothing to joke about. <laughs> <laughs> a gothic retreat. A long si spell of silence, listening to Dvorak. A skillful touch in the course of a day's commute. Mm -hmm. That has a little mm -hmm. fragment of music, I think. Mm -hmm. That was definitely for me. Yeah, that's where we're going to be surprised too. This is a slightly longer one. There are no mirrors. There was something odd about her, a curiously bewildered look on her face. Long into the moonlit night, in various states of disrepair, practicing for the real thing, the only appropriate expression, the blank where her face should be. She recalls an early meeting, the bafflement of the body as it slowly subsided, a term limit on the eternal. And the fun was really mm. pairing them up with mm -hmm. the fragments mm -hmm. and across a addition of ten, mm. finding things to go with them. Mm. One last one. The stars of every show. I actually did an artist book on this one at the beginning of it. The stars of every show. Cowboy and crazy joyrider bobbed to the surface of the sea of drowning, long into the moonlit night in various states of disrepair. Lone racing rabbit, his lucky cowboy hat, the first in a series of dubious decisions, lands with an awkward splash, expanding every last ounce of malice. Struggling with the dis difficulty of discovery, the promise of impending rumpus, they're marked for stardom on a wider stage. <laughs> Burrowed deep in the fortress mountains, the light can be difficult to maintain, its tone too serious, at times almost grim. In this colorless stillness, uncharted realms, living demands creativity and discipline. I fear we will live out our days here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hear from my feet less and less. It's called happy feet. I hear from my feet less and less. They no longer itch for track shoes. They've run so far, so fast, so hard. One night, they brought me to your door. I tiptoed in, aching and cold from my long trek. But you, you warmed me with your heart. And in your wild way, you tamed my feet. Warm at last, my feet long only to hang out next to yours, showing their souls to the flames in your hearth. Happy and rested, I'm trading in my cleats for dancing shoes. <laughs> when two people don't get along, one of them has to get out of the fire because they both can't get burned. I know everything happens for a reason, but I don't want things to happen for a reason. <laughs> I know that part of San Jose like the back of my head. <laughs> I just can't see any further than I can walk. There's always some democracy going on over there. I'm too old to steal. 
I'm going through some changes. And the changes are that I have to just keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is going to change forever. <laughs> That's a record that will go on my record. <laughs>
Down, 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 under the ground, under the floating villages, metropolis of fishes, there is nothing left of the sea but its speech. Land, 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 nothing remains of the pacing famous sea but its speech. And into its talkative seven tombs, the anchor dives through the floors of a church. Goodbye and good luck struck the sun and the moon to the fisherman lost on the land. He stands alone in the dorm of his home with his long-legged heart in his hand. Mm -hmm. that's, that's only a third of it, so it's really powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, there's this tradition in Japanese poetry, and I'm, not a, I'm definitely not a scholar of it, but uh, I, I have a book, so that's, all, that's, that's the extent of my scholarship. Um, and they're, they're uh, Japanese death poems, and they're, um, I, I just I took to them, and they're not, uh, I, don't, I don't mean to be morbid here, um, I've written a whole bunch of them, um, and I'm not writing them as a Japanese poet, because uh, they traditionally would be written either by haiku poets or other poets like that, or by Zen um, monks sometimes, as they apprehended that death was was imminent. And um, but I just thought, well, boy, you know, what an interesting moment to be sort of staring back and what do you what do you write? And so anyway, for some for some reason, I, I took to that as a concept. So. Uh, these are a bunch of things I've been writing over the past year. They're very, they're very small. Um, um, restless all my life, and then the rest. I have so much fun painting, even when it's shitty. I hate to give it up. <laughs> The dead are not like you and I. They have more money. <laughs> uh, it's hard to find a metaphor for all of this. Gestures vaguely, broadly. But I've stumbled upon a door. I'm sorry I can't come to the phone right now. I'm busy rearranging deck chairs in the Titanic. <laughs> the wind will carry me away, blow wind into the night. Thank you.